Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. How are you ever really going to know if you can trust God? You got to step out. <laughs> How are you ever going to know if God will take care of you financially if you never do the part he asks you to do? <laughs> well, I'm trusting God to take care of me, but are you doing good? You know, you're also never going to know. You can't trust God if you don't know that he loves you. And to be honest, this is just the most basic, simple, the whole message about God loves you just seems to me like the basic, simple message. But the very first public message that I ever preached outside of just the home Bible studies I was doing when I started a women's ministry at our church back in the early 80s, And oh man, I wanted to have the right word for that message. I was so excited. It was like my first time to really preach publicly. And I, God put on my heart, tell them I love them. And I just pretty much initially said, no, that, that's just, I don't want to go with some little Sunday school message. I wanted to be God's woman of power for the hour. You know? <laughs> I wanted something that would just blow people out of their seats. I didn't want to go say, Jesus loves me, this I know. <laughs> But now listen, what God put in my heart, he said, people don't know I love them. If they do, they'd act a lot different than what they do. Yeah. Perfect love casts out fear. We don't live in fear. If we really know that God loves us, we're not afraid to take a step of faith. We're not afraid to be wrong. But what if I step out and I miss God? Well, if you really know that God loves you, you don't have to worry about that. If your heart's right, you take a step of faith and you find out what God's trying to say to you. And there's so many wonderful scriptures about how much God loves us. And let me just tell you, it's not something that you're going to really get in one little message. This is something you got to meditate on for a long, long time. If I said right now, how many of you know that God loves you? You'd probably all say, yeah, yeah. But what do you do when you've had trouble for a long time and God is silent? What do you do in your midnight hour when Nobody seems to care about you. What do you do when you haven't heard anything from God for so long that you wonder where in the world that he's at? Those are the times when you've got to be able to open your mouth and say, God, I know that you love me. I don't understand what's going on, but I know that I know that I know that you love me. I know that you love me. And this is not a head knowing, this is a heart knowing. And just in case you've never heard it, I want to be a mouthpiece for God today, and I want to declare to you and to everybody watching on television, God loves you, and he loves you unconditionally. Maybe your parents didn't love you, but God says, I will adopt you, and I will take you up as my own child. I know what it's like to be loved. I didn't get it from my parents. I married a guy when I was 18 that mistreated me and ran around with other women. I didn't learn it from him. I've learned about love from my husband. And that's one of the things that you can do for other people. One of the best ways that you can serve God is to let God love other people through you. Amen. Did you hear me? God loves you. Let's look at Romans chapter 8. Beginning in verse 35. Y'all doing okay today? Man, it makes you powerful when you know that God loves you. <laughs> I mean powerful. Receiving God's love heals everything that's broken in your soul.
All of our insecurities, all of our fears come because we have not received love from other people and then we begin to think there's something wrong with us and that's why they didn't love us. But God comes to restore, to heal the brokenhearted to bind up our wounds and our bruises. And the Bible says that the love of God is poured out into our hearts by the Holy Ghost. When you receive Christ, the Holy Spirit pours the love of God into you, but you have to receive it. <laughs> Romans 8, 35, who shall ever separate us from Christ's love? Shall suffering and affliction and tribulation or calamity and distress or persecution or hunger or destitution or peril or sword? He said, no matter what your problem is, no matter how much you don't understand it, don't ever let it separate you from the love of God. If you know God loves you, you're powerful. Even as it is written, for your sake we are put to death all the day long, we are regarded and counted as sheep for the slaughter. And I love that particular part of these scriptures because to other people sometimes, we can just look like these dumb sheep that are being led to slaughter. Well, what good is it doing you to serve God? Well, look at your circumstances. You know what, no matter what my circumstances are, I've got something on the inside. Come on, I've got something on the inside that most of the world is trying to buy across a counter somewhere and they're never gonna get it. Everything you go buy to try to make yourself feel good is already rotting and decaying when you take it home. But we've got something that is imperishable and beyond decay. I'm sorry, but God loves you and there's just nothing you can do about it. And let me tell you this, I love to say this. God will never love you any more than he does at this moment right now. See, you're, you're like, you know why? Because we think, well, if we're better, then God will love us more. No, his love is perfect and unconditional, and it's not based on anything we do or don't do. right now and you should not try to be good to get God to love you more you should want to do good as a response to the love that he gives you freely my gosh I'm not doing this today to get God to love me I'm giving him every bit of energy that I have got for as long as I'm breathing because of what he has already done for me Yet right in the middle of all these things, we are more than conquerors. How can you be more than a conqueror when you've got some of the problems you've got? Because before you ever got the problem, God had already arranged for your victory. And all you're doing is walking it out. It may be taking longer than you'd like, but if you don't quit on God, oh honey, the day is gonna come. For I'm persuaded beyond doubt. See, this is the place where we need to be. We need to be persuaded beyond doubt. The Apostle Paul said to Timothy, it's recorded in 2 Timothy 1.12, for I am positively persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have entrusted to him. Give God your kids and be positively persuaded that he will take care of them. They're, they're gonna have to let him. My prayers will never overturn somebody else's free will. I can pray for somebody as much as I want to and what that does is it opens the door for God to work in their life and 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 work in their life. 
and he will do everything that he possibly can to turn their lives around. Prayer makes all things possible. People still have to choose, but one thing's for sure, if there's somebody in my life that I love, me making myself miserable and ruining my life because they're not serving God is not gonna make them serve God. If God can't do it, I sure can't do it. So why not trust God and go ahead and do some good and maybe they'll see the life that I'm living <laughs> and say, this, this stuff's real. I'm sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor things impending and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God which is found in Christ Jesus. Now, Isaiah 49, 15. Can God forget about you? No, not really. Isaiah 49, 15, how many of you ladies have ever uh, breastfed a child? Okay, I did too. Now I'm sorry guys. <laughs> You're gonna have to use your holy imagination to get this one. <laughs> I don't think I could have really properly understood these scriptures had I never breastfed a child. Verse 14, but Zion, Jerusalem, her people as seen in captivity said, the Lord has forsaken me and my Lord has forgotten me. Now I wonder how many times we say that in our lives. Well, God's forsaken me, God's forgotten all about me. And the Lord answered, can a woman forget her nursing child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yes. They may forget, but I will not forget you. Now here's the thing, and I don't mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to be rude, I'm just giving you the facts. If you're a nursing mother, and I remember having this happen, you can be over here in one end of the house, and your child can be out in another room, and you can hear that child cry, and immediately you fill up with provision. <laughs> Come on. You don't have to try to. You don't gotta turn on a switch. The kid doesn't have to ask for milk. Just <gasps> and you fill up with provision for that child. And furthermore, if they have gotten themselves so upset that they won't take the provision, now you got a big mess. <laughs> and you actually were just like, will you calm down? Will you calm down? I mean, I, I remember a child like being so upset. <laughs> and you know what? That's the way we are sometimes. God's trying to say, will you be still and let me help you? <laughs> Come on. I, I got it covered. I've got everything you need. <laughs> Come on, God put this in here. I didn't make this up. Oh God, have you forgotten us? And he says, really? Can a nursing mother forget her child? <laughs> and now for all of you who have problems with tattoos, here we go. <laughs> oh boy. We're gonna knock over some religious cows now, aren't we? Verse 16, <laughs> behold, I have indelibly imprinted or tattooed a picture of you on the palm of each of my hands. I 
I'll go ahead, don't be stiff and sour, you might as well laugh. God's like, He's got a picture of you tattooed on the palm of his hands. We like to set pictures of our kids around the house. <laughs> and then he says, your walls are continually before me. That simply just means your protection. Okay, now just... Hang on, go to Hebrews 13, 6. I'm about to get happy. Woo. You can trust God because you know that he loves you. Woo, Jesus. See, the guys didn't even understand that example and they're the ones doing the shouting. Okay, this scripture is so good, it's just like. <sighs> Hebrews 13, 5, I'm sorry, guys in the back. Back it up, one scripture. Let your character or your moral disposition be free from the love of money. In other words, you don't have to worry about money. Including greed, avarice, lust, and craving after earthly possessions and be satisfied with your present circumstances and with what you have. Now that doesn't mean that you don't want any change in your life, but it just means that for right now, you're trusting God for where you're at and you're saying, I'm just gonna enjoy the journey and believe that whenever the time is right for God to do something else in my life, he'll do it. Now hang on, you haven't even heard the scripture yet. For he, God himself has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not <laughs> in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down, nor relax my hold on you, most assuredly not. I will not, I will not, I will not. I will not, I will not, I will not forsake you, nor let you, I will not, but God, when are you going to come through? <laughs> well, maybe when you trust God and do good. <laughs> Stop worrying about all your problems and get up every day and say, God, what can I do today to be a blessing to somebody else? Let me tell you something, you don't have to look very far to find somebody who's in need. Amen? <laughs> You're getting it, aren't you? Boy, if you wanna make the devil mad, just refuse to sit around and be miserable. <laughs> Say, just forget it. I am not gonna stay home and feel sorry for myself all day today. I refuse to be confused. I'm not gonna try to figure anything out. You can't get confused if you don't try to figure it out. Mysteries are called mysteries because they're mysteries. I don't need to know. I'm happy not knowing. I found out sometimes the less you know, the happier you are. <laughs> Amen. And you know what, even if you have been dumb, dumb, double dumb, and you have gotten your life in a super goofy mess, God will still help you. He will still help you. That doesn't mean he won't correct us but he'll still help us. And you might think, well, how is God gonna help me with the things that I've done? How can God use me with the things that I've done? See, I think when we talk about, can I really trust God? It's not so much that we don't know that God 
can do whatever he needs to do, but we wonder, will he do it for me? Come on. Will he do it for me? So just listen to this. It seems to me when I read the Bible that God actually prefers imperfect people that are messed up. Yeah, here I am. That's right. I mean, all you got to do is look at his disciples. I mean, there weren't the only 12 men on the planet. I mean, surely there were some better options. And he prayed all night before he chose them. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians that God purposely chooses and deliberately selects what in the world is low-born and treated with contempt, that no one can take the credit for what God is doing. Yeah. Now just listen to this list and you're about to feel a lot better about yourself. Noah got drunk. Abraham lied about his wife. Peter denied Christ three times. David committed adultery and murder. Jacob was a deceiver. Mary Magdalene had seven demons cast out of her and she was on the travel team. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. And the other Mary, as she's referred to, seems like everybody was named Mary, I don't know. The other Mary who traveled with Jesus was a farmer prostitute. She was on the travel team. But you know what, it's amazing when you love God, what all it covers. You know, those, those two women were at the cross when he died, they were the ones that got up early the next morning and were at the tomb. Rahab was a harlot. Ruth had been an idol worshiper. <laughs> Moses murdered an Egyptian, did not always believe God, and needed some anger management classes. <laughs> Thomas was a doubter. Gideon was fearful, Jeremiah was fearful, James and John wanted special seats of honor in the kingdom. The disciples fought and argued about which of them was the greatest. <laughs> Paul and Barnabas had to split up because they couldn't get along. <laughs> Elijah struggled with depression, he experienced self-pity and wanted to die. <laughs> Jonah ran away from God in the call on his life. God gave him a second chance. Samson had serious problems with lust and anger. <laughs> Solomon married foreign wives and was led into idolatry. I don't know about you, but after those 20, I'm starting to feel better about myself. <laughs> Whew, I'm feeling good. Amen, I'm feeling good. The rightness of God is greater than all the wrongness that we have all put together. And he says, I love you. I've got a good plan for you. You can trust me. If it takes longer than you think it should, trust me, keep doing good. Obey me, find somebody to be a blessing to, and you never have to be afraid that I will not come through for you because God will never let you down. He will never disappoint you. He may not give you everything you want, but he will give you the best thing for you. Come on, give God praise. Well, we can't trust God and worry at the same time. So let me encourage you to cast your care on God and believe that he is working behind the scenes on your behalf.
Today we are having a medical camp on behalf of Joyce Mayor Ministries. It's a big event for the village people so that they can receive medication and the love of Christ. That's what is happening here right now. There are so many instances where people who have come here, they have been suffering from those diseases or infections from quite long, but they never go to a medical help because they don't have a finance even for travel. People are quite receptive to us because they are seeing that we are helping them beyond just sharing the gospel. And you know. This event has been uh, being planned in our minds and hearts for the past two, three months. So the church in Hyderabad is praying and the village church has been praying continuously. And that's what we are seeing that God's grace, everything is going on smoothly. <laughs> Thank you very much for your contribution to India and because of your help, you are, we are you making us to go every corner, looking every place. And without your support, we cannot go. Met deze mobiele kliniek geven we bij Hand of Hope elke maand nieuwe hoop aan duizenden mensen. Hier krijgen de patiënten alles op één plek: van oogtesten tot röntgenfoto's tot het verstrekken van medicatie. En dat allemaal dankzij de vele donateurs die dit werk steunen. Wilt u meehelpen de wereld te veranderen? Word dan onze partner en doneer regelmatig. Wij sturen u graag kostenloos onze brochure toe. Vraag deze aan door te bellen naar 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl slash partner. ontdekt de beste quotes van Joyce. Nu op Facebook.